Hello friends, and welcome back to Gloomhaven, Olympus's Chosen. Now, before we get into this episode, I have to say that I am just blown away by the support that I have received for this series. It means so much to get some feedback, to get questions, and to fix some of my errors. All of these things are absolutely welcomed and I appreciate each and every one of them. So I'm going to talk about a correction really quickly. That is when I was talking about Oxalis and his level up. So when I had made the level up, I had said that um, you can, you choose from the level and that's actually not true. And I did not know this. Um, I did not follow this, but uh, clearly you are able to choose any one of these cards that are available at your level. So if you're at level five, you're able to choose either one of the two cards that become available at level five or any one of the cards that are lower in level than uh, level five in that example. Now this opens up a strategy that I never took advantage of when I play the board game. So I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in this and seeing where this could take us. And the other thing was there's a line of sight. I, I never even knew um, that you could see the line of sight while in combat. So we'll get to that and uh, we'll check it out. We will be going for the Enox encampment. This is scenario number three of the scenario book of Gloomhaven. Okay, just just to make sure there's no spoilers if you're not interested in those. So scenario three, Enoch's encampment. But before we hit the road, we're going shoe shopping. So let's go to, let's see here, the shoe section. I'm gonna be purchasing boots of striding for Ares. I think it's uh, in our best interest to have more mobility with him because he doesn't have, he doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of movement without perhaps burning cards or if he is to use this correctly or in a, an efficient manner, then he has to be hitting pretty hard. So at the moment we have grab and go and that's kind of our major move there. So. Um, I'm going to grab Boots of Striding for Ares. And Ate, I really like having winged shoes for her because this just opens up so many more avenues, more opportunities for her when she is able to jump over the enemies or over an obstacle that otherwise she wouldn't be able to get into a good position. So this is going to help her out substantially with things like move six, right? So, and then Ares, just having that extra two move is, is pretty nice. As for Oxalis, I took Sentient Growth and I'm replacing Rock Tunnel. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because both cards don't produce or don't infuse or consume earth, which was kind of something that uh, I'm always, I, I feel like I'm always lacking with the crag heart. Um, I was considering crushing grasp, but this is one that infuses earth. So I wanted to kind of keep all of the cards that infuse earth at least. And I'm not ready to drop any of the other cards that consume Earth. So I think this one is okay to get rid of. It does get rid of this burned jump move five. But we already have that with Crater, a move four. So that's... I don't think he needs two jump cards that burn. I think one is sufficient for him. And... The other part was Rock Tunnel, Destroy an Adjacent Obstacle. 
while that gives him a point, Heaving Swing does the same thing, except he's also making an attack. Okay, well, that's probably enough. I'm not going to go to the Temple of the Great Oak. I don't think we need any blessings here. So we're just going to hit the road. Encounter. Heading out a little late, aren't you? The guard at the wall looks at you passively. You grunt in response and head through the opened gate. Nobody's going to go looking for you, your corpse, if you don't return. The guard shouts at your back. You end up embarking out the road much later than you had hoped. Events in town saw to that. But as the dusk settles on the horizon, you feel confident that you are up to any threat you might face. And then begins the howling of wolves, vicious, foul beasts. And judging from their sounds, they seem to be getting closer, potentially hungrier. So I think <laughs> let the wolves come, right? Uh, or we can just run away. I think because the brute is here and the Cragheart and potentially, I mean, every all three of them could probably, I could see them all saying, let them come, right? So let the wolves come. Confident that the wolves pose no significant threat, you stand your ground and prepare for battle. The pack comes ragged and hungry, slowly emerging from the dark and surrounds your party. There are more of them than you expected, but not enough to take you down. You suffer a bite or two, but are able to fight them off. So each of us, each character starts the next scenario with three damage. That's not bad. I, we can we can handle that. So this merchant wants to make an example of some caravan raiders. Yeah, seems reasonable enough. For the right amount of money, almost anything can be made reasonable. You enter the Dagger Forest and begin to track down the encampment using Jaxera's crude map. It is well hidden, but following the signs outlined on the parchment, you find a dense cluster of huts in a small clearing of the forest. All that's left is to head in and make that requested example. All right. Well, make an example of the Inox who crossed Jaxara. So we're facing some archers, guards, and shaman. So two of them can attack at range, and then the Inox guards work fairly similar to the, uh, the bandit guards. All right. Ares, do we want to go sadist or executioner? Kill five or more monsters, or kill an undamaged with a single attack. Ooh. I'm thinking kill five or more monsters. I don't know if Executioner is possible at this time with six health. Yeah, let's let's go for Sadist. Oxalus. Plunder, loot a chest. So there is going to be a chest in this. Or kill three or fewer monsters. Hmm, okay. Actually, because we've taken Sadist, Pacifist might be a good... That one might be a good one to go for. And we can leave the looting to whoever actually gets there. That makes sense. And finally, Ate. Aggressor, have one or more monsters present on the map. Or Die Hard, never allow your current hit point value to drop below half. Let's go Die Hard with her, I think. This does give two perk points to her. Which is pretty nice. I think we I think we go die hard. Because aggressor might not work. Whereas die hard I can force that to work. So alright. Let's go on in. Ooh, okay, our objective. Kill a number of enemies equal to five times the number of mercenaries. We have to kill fifteen enemies. And then uh, maybe I should have seen what Oxalus... Yeah, 
Okay, well, anyway, here we go. Okay, well, round one. What do we have on the field so far? Well, we've got this one major big room here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five small rooms off to the sides. Uh, this is, I mean, we're basically in the middle of the camp and these are the huts. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, we have hazardous terrain, which is something new uh, for this campaign anyway. And this is going to damage anybody who walks through it. And so if we push or maybe try to make them move into it, that would be that would be nice. But of course, it's going to hurt us, too. We've got some obstacles here in the middle. And then we have the dreaded shaman, an elite shaman at that in the back with a couple Enoch's archers. Hmm. And then, of course, four, four guards up front. So, well... I uh, maybe regret biting those wolves off now, but uh, I think I think we'll be fine. All right, round one. First up is Ares, the brute, with spare dagger to make a ranged attack and warding strength to get some shield moving here. This is going to be important, I think, for the incoming rounds, the incoming damage from the the guards here. And we have the Cragheart Oxalis with Earthen Clod to heal somebody up a little bit, maybe. And Dirt Tornado to potentially to get some muddles going, too. I'm hoping that I can hit all four of them without moving and without, uh, without impacting the Brute and or Scoundrel. I don't I think Scoundrel is going to be fine. I think Ate is going to be fine, but... And then last at 86 is Athe with single out and special mixture to get a poison out too. So I was considering to kind of use this to heal up too, but I I think I think we just need to be dealing damage quickly with them. And once they're dealt with, we might be able to rush back here to kind of deal some uh, some damage out there too. I know. It would be nice. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't give us any information. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So, there is a spawn point here that um, is bringing in an Enox guard at the end of the round. It looks like just one. It doesn't say if there's going to be two or anything like that, but there is a spawn point. So... As we, you know, as as we're killing them, more are going to be coming in. So we have to be we have to be careful, but it is going to take some time for it to reach us too, so. Alright. Well let's do this. So the shaman's going first and disarming, but one, two, and then one, two, three, so it's not gonna be able to reach anybody, that's good. But it is going to be walking toward us. You don't have to worry about any incoming damage from the, the Enox archers. Uh, they're too far away. And then the guards are only going to move one. Which is good. Which is really good actually. Because these three aren't going to be able to do any damage to us. That's, that's real nice of them. So I'm wondering, actually, should I pull a... Hmm. Should I pull an audible and just move and maybe attack instead? And I can do this later. I, I think I'm going to stick with it. Let's stick with our plan. Okay. And I think... Might as well just start attacking the one that's coming toward us. Oh, yeah, this is unfortunate. Maybe I should have gone later with with Oxalus, but 
All right, let's uh, let's perform this attack. All right, let's. Ooh. Huh. <laughs> That's interesting. So it's showing all of the ways that I can connect. This is pressing L, by the way. Oh, I see, I see. That's that's even cooler, actually. So it's coming from the hex that I initiated in. That is, that's actually pretty cool because then I can say, hey, if I'm standing, do I want to move here or here? Then I can make my choice because of the line of sight. But that's really cool. I mean, the rule is that you, if you can draw a line from a corner to a corner of any of the two hexes. If you're here and your target is here, then this is drawing a line from all of the corners to all of the corners because there's there's no problem with line of sight. I like it. I like it. It looks a bit looks a bit weird at first, but I think uh, I get it and I like it. It's really good to have. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's make this attack. <laughs> cool. Half health now. That's nice. I could heal up now. I could. Let's let's do it. I'm gonna heal up now with Ares because Oxalis can heal up himself instead of of somebody else there so we're gonna heal two people now I might as well attack over here to make this attack muddled so that would be at disadvantage that's attacking both of them unfortunately you know I don't I don't have earth ready and I'm not gonna use the power potion cool hey doing some good work here and muddled for that attack and then we'll just heal ourselves. All right. That that came in really handy there. Uh yep, we'll use both. Yeah, if I had waited to go late with 82 with Dirt Tornado for Oxalis, then I would have been able to attack these three instead of just this one or maybe these two. Um, which would have made it more efficient, but I made a mistake. Oh well. And I don't know if I want to just move here to finish this one off. But I could do something like this. I can move here to poison this one and then finish. Yeah, let's do it that way. I like that. So I'll move here. Skip the rest of that. We're going to poison this one. And then we'll use single out to attack over here. Good. One down. 14 to go. Now unfortunately, we're going to notice here that only the only the monsters, these Enochs that are on the map now are going to be dropping the loot, these coins, the gold. Any monster that spawns in after the first round does not drop any more uh loot. Now if I was to open a door, that's different because those are those are I mean, technically they're not on the map, but they are placed there when you open the door. But if they're spawned after, then they do not drop any loot. So we'll we'll be seeing loot from them. And if I decide to open any doors, which I think we'll probably need to, I don't think I don't think we want to just wait for the other ones to come in one by one or whatever. Uh, I'll probably take special mixture back to heal her, but 
<laughs> particularly because of her diehard, we we definitely want to to heal her up, but we can we can wait. Okay. So round two. We certainly want to be going fast with Ate. And probably taking Ares and putting him right in the middle of all of this fun stuff here so that he's going to take the brunt of it and then the Kragheart, um, Oxalis and um, Ate can start doing more damage without taking a lot of damage. So, all right, round two. First up is Ate the Scoundrel going at nine with Trickster's Reversal, which will mitigate all incoming damage from this one guard. And Smoke Bomb, just for the default attack, I'm not entirely... I didn't really want to use something like Venom Shiv, and because she's going fast and nobody's standing adjacent to her target, then things like Sinister Opportunity, uh, Flanking Strike, just aren't going to be that good. So, I'm just going to use Smoke Bomb for the, the default attack there. Then, very shortly after, is Ares with Provoking Roar and Leaping Cleave. The movement to get into here and then um, stop one of them from attacking. So we can mitigate one, two incoming attacks here. Uh, finally, 13, going as fast as possible for, I guess, all three of them. Um, this is just to get moving. And, oh no, sorry, this is to get moving. And I think I'm actually going to bring Oxalis here so that can heal her up a little bit. And then it will do an attack one on all of them. It's not much, but it's it's something. And then we have Unstable Upheaval for that default attack again. Uh, trying to trying to use sentient growth in a manner that's going to to heal and attack at the same time. So I think this will work. I could also do this if I put uh, Ares here. Then I could do an AOE attack there instead. And I might still do that and use use this just as a movement. We'll we'll see how. What incoming damage is coming in from uh, down the field? So the Shaman moving one. Okay. So one, and then one, two, three. One, two, three. So again, nothing coming from... But I'm, I'm happy to see two things here. One, we're not taking incoming damage. And two, that it's actually moving toward us instead of just like hanging out back here and healing or doing something like that. Those those are pretty annoying. The Enox or Inox archers are going to move three. So one, two, three, and then a range. So we don't have to worry about that. And then the guards are move two, attack two. Not Nothing too terribly special. Uh, but we can stop you from attacking... And we'll just hit you. Oh! A times two on a default attack. Well done. And I was actually thinking this would have been a good time for... Is it this button? Here we go. Th that would have been a good time last time to use the stamina potion to get special mixture back. Immediately where I could use Trickster's Reversal, like I just did, and heal. Like, I didn't need to attack. I could have just done this and then attack, right? Or uh, heal herself. But I will take the six damage. I am not disappointed with that. And I, I'm considering taking it back now, though. Because I would like to heal... But I do have other ways to heal, too, so... You know what? No. I'm gonna skip it. We're skipping it. Okay. So... They can move three. 
one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So actually, if whoever is standing here is going to be attacked, it's not a lot of incoming damage. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it's only going to be you. So yeah, it's not a lot of incoming damage. So I think I'm going to use this. Having a hard time here. So I think I'm going to do my initial thought here. And what I could do differently is just move up with this and then do leaping cleave here. And then he can attack all of them. But that's only an attack of two. And then I would heal you for two. Now, okay. So here, let's move. Oops. Undo, undo. Let's just move to here. Yep. We're going to skip the rest of that movement, and I'm just going to disarm you. Alright. And now you, let's definitely get you into here. That's going to heal both of you, one. And then perform an attack on all of them. That is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. All right. Confirm that. And confirm the attack. A power potion? Nah. No. That's not... That's not worth it. Okay. Nice. Eh, but that's okay. And I think I'll just continue t attacking here because we've got enough um, adjacent targets. We have enough mercenaries around this one, so we'll be fine. Oops. Attack you. Super. Let's not get too excited about this, right? Anytime you become happy about how turns are going in Gloomhaven, things can go poorly very quickly. So I'm just content so far, right? Just content. Round three. So it looks like one is going to be pouring out of here basically forever. Um, which is fine. That's all fine. I don't see any more spawn points, so that's, that's also good. I don't want to get flanked if I move out here. But, all right. Well, round three. First up is Ate, going super early with Flanking Strike and Sinister Opportunity for the movement. Uh, probably just going to be attacking this one here and hoping to kill it pretty quickly. If that doesn't kill it, kill her, then um, Ares will follow with Eye for an Eye for the movement and Skewer to get through both of them. Hoping that's going to be the finisher that's going to help out with Sadist. And, I mean, for the for the overall goal, of course. Uh, and finally, Oxalis with going at 35 with Crushing Grasp for the immobilizing attack. Also bringing in Earth, which is going to be important. And backup ammunition. I kind of wanted to bring this in, but I don't think I'm going to be able to bring it in before the... Uh, before he takes a rest, so I'm going to use it for the movement instead. Let's see what they're doing. Yeah, that's the problem there. But I'm okay with that because it's going to be... The, the Shaman's going to move toward us into melee range or, or target a melee range kind of t hex and then start healing. So if we can take care of them, then it's not going to be healing anybody, right? Then we have the guards. They're going to be strengthening themselves after they do a slight movement and a small attack. 
And the archers are not moving, but I think they're actually in range now. Yeah, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, so both of them are in range. That could be an issue. Um, so let's maybe start targeting them a bit more than than not at all. Okay, so it's just continuing to be Inox guards. Okay, well, let's uh, let's start by moving over here. Yes. And we're going to just skip this. We don't want to move him around or anything, but we'll do flanking as attack here. Amazing. It didn't didn't kill her. That's good. But it's close enough that we've got good chances of killing both with skewer here. Now is probably a good time to take a card. I was kind of I'm thinking singled out, but I'm also thinking special mixture because the top and the bottom abilities are good for special mixture. I could heal up. I guess we don't need three heal, but it would be nice to heal up a little bit. And I don't I don't think we need it. Single out would be good. It's just a late card, and it still has that same as flanking a uh, flanking strike. So I'm gonna go for single out, and I think I'm gonna bring it now. Great. It will at least, it'll give me another option. If I don't want to go early, I can go very late with her. And that's, that's what I, that's kind of my play style with her. I really like having either very early or very late uh, cards in my hand always for her. All right, let's take a step back. Or, because we've got hide armor, warding strength, maybe maybe it would be good for us to start moving toward them instead of just moving back again let's let's do it this isn't the best way to use boots of striding um but i think it's i think it's better to get him to get uh aries out front for some of these these attacks that are coming in and maybe what I can do is bring yeah we'll we'll see we'll see if maybe we can split up those attacks but I yeah I don't think we can let's let's move up and skip the rest and we're gonna use skewer along with air that we used that we brought in last time let's make this attack come on awesome awesome so we're down four and sadist. Kill five or more monsters. That hasn't updated. I guess it might update at the end of uh, his turn. Good. Yeah. Zero incoming attacks. Zero healing. That's 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 what I that's how I like it with uh, shamans. So. This is going to move one. My thought with this was... I was thinking to move up here and then immobilize the Shaman. And I I still kind of like the idea. And unless I go way over here, there's no way... They're both... Both of these uh, archers are going to be attacking the Brute. Ares. Unless I go way over here. I'd like to take care of the the shaman early though. So I might just go here to immobilize, bring in earth. This is a lot of incoming damage though. 6. Yikes. Okay. Well, this is tough. Cuz if I go out here, it's going to be attacking at disadvantage which is good against uh, against Oxalus. And then the other one would be attacking here. I think I gotta go for it. 
I gotta, I gotta do it. We have to move some of the damage around. We can't just have one person taking all of the damage. Ah. But at least it can't move. Not that it's really going to do anything now, but. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, but it's okay. We've taken out those first four in a pretty efficient manner, I think. Good, okay. Zero damage from there. And just a couple damage here. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, well. Round four. It's going... It's going smoothly. So far, it's going smoothly. Uh, I, I can't... I can't uh, be excited about that, though. I can't. We're going first with Ate using Backstab for the movement and Venom Shiv for some poisoning attack. I really went back and forth on this one and I think getting some poison out might help if the Shaman decides to heal. Then that way it's only going to remove the poison instead of doing any healing. And if it doesn't, then we've got some poison on our target and uh, that's going to help us anyway. Then it is Oxalis, our Crag Heart with Rumbling Advance to heal. Um, ooh, no, 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 sorry. We're going to be moving and using Crater to do attack. I'm, this is another one. I really wanted to heal. And maybe we do. Let's, let's see what incoming damage is coming. And then finally, Ares going late with balanced measure and grab and go. So move four and attack for four. Let's, let's see that combination. This is when the Boots of Striding really shine with the Brute with balanced measure for the attack. But we already used it, so an attack four is still not bad, though. Okay, so... Oh, no. Even they... So we've got a lot of incoming damage... Three, six from the archers. We are in range for all of that. Um, then the guards. That's another, yeah. Okay. And then the shaman. All right. Well, I still think it's worth going over here. I'm probably going to poison. Or should I go over here? Hmm. Hmm. No, let's let's move over here. I kind of want to pick up some loot too, but yeah, let's go here. We'll pick this up and we'll make that attack. There, poisoned. That's going to be nice uh, if down the road he decides that he's going to heal himself. Then he won't heal himself at all. Instead, just remove the poison. And we do want to get rid of you pretty quickly. Um, okay, next. And we got some loot. Oxalis. I'm thinking healing. I'm thinking healing because uh, these two aren't going to be able to reach us but we've got you're going to back up and then attack you can attack as is and you can attack as is and all of them are coming for you buddy so and i really wanted to use crater okay actually we could use crater to take you and push you back and we would you would end up here, and then we wouldn't have any incoming damage from you, but we'd still have 
three and three from there. Yeah, even if you could, even if I push you back here, you can move right back to that space and then still make an attack. So, yeah, this is unfortunate. I, I think I just have to go for this heal. It's going to keep Earth infused for the next round. And, I mean, I'm I'm not... I'm not going to use... Ooh, maybe I could... I could back up to maybe here. I could back up to here, actually. And that's going to spread out the damage a little bit. That's going to make one one of them attack the Brute instead. I like that. But we could have them all attack the Brute if we were selfish, but... Let's, let's move here. Let's take some of the damage. It's not much. That's good. Good. This one's at advantage, though. Okay, could be a lot worse. Wow. Oh, because we're... No, he's not stuck there. Why did he not move away? Ah, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, this is something else that... Maybe I could have put this in the in the video. Cause it's something that I definitely didn't think about when um when playing the board game. In this case, the scoundrel has the leather armor. So the next two times you're attacked, the attacker gains disadvantage on the attack. But so if he if the let's say shaman right now pulls this card. Move to attack three, range three. So why would it move away when it's already going to be um, attacking at disadvantage? The answer is it's not going to. I didn't learn this until I played the digital version, this game. And it kind of made me realize, like, you know, taking that literally, the monster will move the least amount of spaces to deal the most amount of damage. And in this case, there's re there's zero reason to move a hex or two hexes or any amount of hexes to perform an attack at disadvantage, no matter where it's going to be. So in this case, it's not going to move and it's just going to perform an attack at disadvantage. Even though they're standing next to each other, um, that, you know, it's not disadvantage twice, right? So we get disadvantage from the leather armor. Now this is going to get rid of her personal, or not her personal goal, but the the goal for the scenario. But I don't feel like burning a card just for a perk point. So yeah, I'm going to take the damage and just that, that sucks, but that's that's uh that's it <laughs> i think i'm going to i kind of want to take Ares and move over here to make this attack against the shaman with balanced measure i could also that would that would put some space between us and these guards so that it would give us some more time we've got some we potentially have one more round and then everybody needs to rest so moving over here put some space between us i kind of like the idea but it still keeps him in the forefront so let's do it and it potentially kills <laughs> amazing okay I'm, I'm too excited right now. I'm too happy. And this is not a good thing in Gloomhaven. It's not called Happy Haven or Joy Haven. It's called Gloomhaven. We've, no matter how good things are going, Gloom is around the corner. Okay. Well, round five. 
We are a third of the way through. We have one, two, three, four, five, six enemies on the map. We haven't opened any of these doors yet. And I think it would be in our best interest to just open a door, potentially, you know, fight some of these. It would have been nice to take these two out already, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And then, um, and then open this door to find a couple more enemies. And by the time they reach us, this would be empty and then we could take them on. But yeah, I'm not seeing that happening. So anyway, round five, we only have a couple of cards. Let's take these two to go early. We can use the shield bash to gain some more shield to, uh, to mitigate some incoming damage potentially. Scoundrel. Um, let's just go late with throwing knives. We can make a couple attacks, but we don't want her to be the, the target anymore. So, and then Cragheart or Oxalus. I guess Heaving Swing and ma Massive Boulder. This is going to be good if they end up standing next to each other. We can deal some damage to, like, everybody. And actually, Heaving Swing would add plus one to the ranged attacks. I was also considering to place some of these out, too. I could put, put one here and here to... It's not really going to make a bottleneck coming this way, but... I thought about putting two here very early on and then just hanging out over here, but no. Okay, let's let's go with Heaving Swing and Massive Boulder and maybe something cool can come out of it. So they're not moving. That's good. That means we really can focus just on them. I'm not sure if I'm going to really be too excited to uh, run around here, but it might it might be okay to do it. In your case, I could move up to here, attack this to push it. Ah, but that's actually, that's pushing after I move. So I'd have to move and then attack. I don't know if I want to burn one of these cards, but I think it's probably fine. We could go for, let's go for a shield bash here. I can move into here. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. And unfortunately, I can't push anybody into any direction that's going to put them in some hazardous territory, but I could just push somebody out of the way. Sure. It's here, so let's do it. And we'll burn Shield Bash for an attack four and stun on... You. Good hit. So that means it's not going to gain a shield, and he's also not gaining retaliation, but that's that's moot at this point. Alright. So yeah, I think I'm gonna use this and then massive boulder. I was also thinking, you know, one, two, three, four, move up to here and then just smash you into that obstacle. I don't think that would kill you. Nah. Let's do this. I'm going to be attacking you. Whoops. Undo. Ooh, okay. So if I don't use this and then move up after, then it would be spreading out the incoming damage and both of them would have disadvantage. So I'm not going to use this, and I probably don't need it anyway. 
I say. <laughs> this is completely opposite to what has gone in the last episode, but I'll take it. And I'll use this to just move into this Enoch's face so that we have incoming disadvantage attack against uh, Ares and Oxalis instead of two attacks potentially on, on Ares. Well, we can mitigate one of them. And Scoundrel. Probably going to have to move. Let's see how far. We can shoot at three. If I had just a little bit more movement, I would have been pretty happy with single out here. But I think, I think throwing knives is going to be good. I could go pick up some loot here and then take a shot and a shot. That might be all right. We desperately need to get rid of these guys. They're going to be hitting the hardest, I think. Whereas they they are a little bit slower, and they don't typically uh, fight at range, so that's that's kind of uh, a plus. Okay, two zeros. That's not bad. All right. Well, <laughs> it's looking like we're going to have to take short rests, unfortunately, but I'm okay with that for now. Yeah, I think we I think we need to. You might be okay to just take a, a long rest, but it's not going to benefit you. Other than just healing too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take short rest with everyone. Smoke bomb. Ooh. I don't really think I'm going to redraw here. We're gonna burn it. That's unfortunate, but it's it's one card that will burn eventually. If I use smoke bomb, then I'm okay with burning it. Cragheart. Or, come on, the name. Oxalis. I'd like this card. But we're burning it. And finally, Ares. Oh, that one's tough. But you're in kind of a precarious situation here. And unfortunately, you're... Like, I couldn't use it now and then walk away. That would be ideal, right? I could use... Like, I can't even use Skewer either. I don't want to move somewhere and then attack too. It would have been nice if I could have used Leaping Cleave now and then run away from what's about to happen. That would have been ideal. But, unfortunate. We can use Provoking Roar, though. That could help out quite a bit too. All right. Well, this is round six. Once again, Ate, the Scoundrel, going first at 9 with Trickster's Reversal just for the movement and throwing knives again. Let's let's hit these. I'm hoping those two attacks will kill them both so I can focus on other things. Uh, then Ares, the Brute, with Provoking Roar to disarm potentially you and then grab and go to get away from all of this mess here. We need to put some distance between us. And I think that's going to help out quite a bit. Also, you know, disarming you, that means that if you are able to catch up to somebody, you're not going to be able to attack. And going extremely late is Oxalis, the Cragheart, with Dirt Tornado at 82 for this attack and Heaving Swing to increase that as well. I'm really hoping that they just clump right up and also that I'm able to reach them. These are two things that I need to happen. <laughs> so if they can all die, 
then you are dis, uh, disarmed, and then we can have an attack one plus one for Earth, plus one here, and we got that minor power potion. Let's let's see if I can make that happen though. Okay, good. Actually, the Enox Guard can only move one. That's really good. And then we have two chances to kill both of them, which is really, really good. Uh, they're not doing much for damage, so that's that's also really good. <laughs> uh, let's make this attack now and hope for the best. Oh, you're like the one I needed a plus one, so... <laughs> well, that didn't work. That didn't work. All right, let's um, let's hop over here, grab some more loot. She's just cleaning up back there. All right, well, it's okay. We we don't need to disarm you because you're not going to reach anybody. So let's attack you. If you die, that's great. If not, you're disarmed. Okay. Remember what I said, don't don't ever get happy in this game. I, which way do we want to go? Probably this way, right? That's going to bring these enemies that way. If I move over here, maybe they'll target you. So yeah, let's let's put uh let's put us over here. I still want to open a door, but we might not, uh, uh, you know, maybe we will. Mm. I think that was the last of our warding strength. So we mitigated six incoming damage with that. That's good. Good. Oh, look at this. Look at how they did this for me. This is perfect. So, heaving swing. Add plus one attack to all your range attacks this round. Confirm. This was so nice of them. Then we're going to use Dirt Tornado. We're going to consume Earth. And we're going to drink a little bit of our Power Potion there. And target all of this mess. Look at that. And we only killed one. Which is really good. Because he's a pacifist for this turn. Or for this scenario. So he's at three now. Let's uh... I really don't like focusing on not killing the enemy, but if he can deal damage instead of killing, that might be a that might be the better choice there. But good work. That was awesome. Now they're all muddled for this round, except for you and you. Um for round seven. How many enemies do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's not enough. It would be it would be ideal, really. We we got to open one of these doors so that we can kill the enemies before they continue their wave. Now I believe if you open this door, they stop pouring through. I'm pretty sure that's the case. If I remember the the way the scenario is laid out, it it would be See, that's the thing with the with the board game. Because I played it by myself, it's it's difficult to pull apart what you're supposed to know and what you're not supposed to know because I you like you know everything. When you're going into a scenario, you read everything, you have to set up the board so you know all of the spawn points and what they do and everything like that. So if you open this door, they stop pouring through. And I, I'm not sure if you're supposed to know that before or after. Like, if I go to open that door, and if it says, okay, now they, they will stop spawning. So it's it's difficult. It, it adds, like, a slight layer of difficulty 
when they don't tell you everything. Because in scenario two, they said in the book, in the manual, it says that the uh, the bandit uh, commander is going to open A and then B and then C and then D in that order. So clockwise starting from this. But it doesn't say that here. So it, it adds a little bit more difficulty. Whereas in the board game, you could just get ready and say, hey, he's going to move to this door right now. So let's go to that door and wait for him. And so I know this going into the scenario. So it, it makes it, I don't know, it's, I don't want to say it's a disadvantage or an advantage. I don't, I don't know. Is it a dis disadvantage if you didn't play the board game or is it an advantage if you played the board game? So yeah, it's, it's tough, but anyway, round seven. And surprise, surprise. Ate is up first with backstab for the movement and special mixture to heal. I think it's about time for her to heal up. And I think now is a, a good opportunity for it. Then we have 18 with Ares, eye for an eye to heal, spare dagger to make a ranged attack. And finally, Oxalus Crag Heart with Earthen Claw at 38 to guess what? Heal. And Massive Boulder to lay a, uh, a major bomb in this mess over here. We're kind of... We've got some interesting bottlenecks here now that the... Uh, this Not the Scoundrel. The Enox Archers laid down for us very nicely. So we've got a trap here and a trap here that they put down, which means there's only one hex they can go through here and one here. So that means if I'm standing here and here, one of them will eventually stand in a trap because this hex will be taken and that hex will be taken. And you can plan even further by trying to figure out which one that's going to be when it says, you know, that one's number five and it needs three damage. This one is number three. So this one would go here first and then this one would go here dying. Like if, if this was to work in our favor, you know? Um, so that's, that's a level of strategy that, uh, when, when you've played enough, you know, this is this is why it's important to know the number that they're associated with. Let's see what happens now. So, okay, the Enox guards are going to move very slowly. That's good. And the archer, let's let's try and take care of that archer, I think. Um Hmm. What cards do you have left? You've got a lot of movement left, so I think... Yeah, let's let's just back up. Let's back up over here. We still got those boots, too. And heal up. She's making bank, by the way. It's... I wonder if we can see... Oh, we can! Right there. It says that she's holding eight gold in her pockets. Uh, you're holding zero, and you're holding zero. So, Scoundrel's doing what Scoundrel does best. Just hanging out back there by herself, and... Uh, she's doing... She's still doing damage, which is good. But... Oh... Oh man, I thought I had enough range. Okay, well, let's make this attack then so that it's not going to attack us. Or I guess not. Okay. Good. Good. They can pull those too, that's nice. All right, massive boulder. I was really, again, I should have probably gone late, but I think I was worried about the healing, so I did this. 
Um, but that's okay. Let's make this attack, and then we'll just be hitting these two uh, damage there. There we go. So one health, one health, four, four, and eight. We'll use this to to heal up, continue healing Ares. It's gonna be on the four or the the front here, so I think it's worth it. So you notice here, he didn't move, or she, she did not move around the uh, the the other Enox in front of her. And that's because she's not going to get ready for the next round. Meaning that, you know, to get to the closest target would be to walk through here. This is not getting her closer to her targets. So she's stuck back there. So it, it helped us for, you know, it's just one, but it helped us in a way that the others went later than her and what's her her number is two apparently yeah two so the others were going later so that she couldn't walk around them or through them just with that move one again this this number is very important got myself some coffee here ready for round eight Starting off, no, not with you, with the Brute. Look at this perfect opportunity here. Skewer right through this, and then balance measure for potentially a lot of movement. We'll see, we'll see where that gets us. Then at 77 with Oxalis, backup ammunition, and unstable upheaval. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Let's see how it works. But I've got a pretty interesting idea for it. Ooh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I forgot about the pacifist while I was choosing this. My my wonderful idea here is move three, one, potentially, you know, moving into here, or I'm not sure if this trap is still gonna be here. We'll we'll have to see. But moving into this kind of area and then using unstable upheaval to do an attack three against all enemies up to two hexes away and that basically would be everybody but that could potentially kill a bunch of enemies or you know, at least one or two and that would kill pacifist hmm so i don't like that idea anymore i think instead i'm gonna go for this Let's go for let's go later. Let's find a heal. And I I think I'm gonna use this for oh man. Now I don't know if I like any of these ideas. Alright, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go late with Avalanche and backup ammunition. Maybe I'll use it, maybe not. Avalanche I can throw uh uh a an obstacle here so that they will not come this way anymore they will walk around and then that will give us some time to perhaps open a door or something like that whoops and then finally Ate just going as late as possible and my idea is to jump over these obstacles to per potentially kill this uh, uh Enox Archer. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, they're not moving. The shield is kind of annoying, but I think we can get through that. Not a lot of incoming damage from the Archer, so I'm cool with that. Oh man, of course they pull a plus two on that, but that's fine, we'll just take it. Now you can't move, which I don't think I was planning on moving with you anyway. Alright, 
Let's get through this. Awesome. Two more down. That fulfills Sadist. And we only have six more needed to, uh, to kill to finish this off. And now I get a movement of... It doesn't say... How much damage did we just do? Two and two. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Yeah. So if I had pulled like plus two and a plus one, then that would have been a lot more damage. It, even if you do more damage than is necessary to kill the enemy, it's it's used in this. It's used in this way, um, in any way. So we dealt more damage, even though they didn't need all of that damage to die. But I think actually they did because of the. I don't know, they. Yeah, we pulled a zero to zero, minus one for the shields. So we dealt four. Oh, okay. So the shields actually mitigated or reduced the amount of move that we got. That's that's interesting. Didn't think of it that way. Now, which way do we want to go? We can go this way. To open I'm not gonna open the door now, that'd be crazy. Uh, or, like, do we want to open this door or this door? I say we open this door while they figure out a way to get to us. So I'll just go here. I'll go back there. So, Cragheart, let's throw that there. And I don't care about putting any obstacles here. There's some loot out there. I forgot about that. Four gold there, two and two. Oh, they're all dropping gold. That's... I guess, okay. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't think they're supposed to be because they're spawning in. I don't think they're supposed to be dropping gold. Hmm. And we'll use backup ammunition to get ready for the next round. And you, let's definitely move in. So we're going to use our boots to jump over all of this. And actually, let's undo that. Um... Oh man, I kind of want to grab this gold, but then you'd have to run through the trap in order to get back out. My idea is that I can run this way next round. So I'm going to have to do it this way, unfortunately. And we'll attack here. Finally, this is this round eight. Finally took out that last one round nine okay so we're gonna have to take some rests but fortunately they're not gonna be able to come through here to attack and they don't have any range so what we're gonna do is go as fast as possible and then run so we can still make an attack with with a single out and then flanking strike we can just run away so that means the brute can take a long rest and I kind of want to just long rest with you, but I am really afraid that they pull that uh, range attack card. I think they only have that one, but man, it is, it's bad if they do. So I think I'm just going to pull a heal to back up. And I'll use this to, to continue healing you too. I think that's good. Now we'll open this door, bust it down. See what's in here, and by the time they get around to us, we've cleared this room, we can take out some of the those ones. Maybe do some range attacks, something like that. Okay, so they're just gonna move two and two. That's not bad at all. So we'll we'll make this attack here. Amazing. That's one more down. Yeah, they're still dropping gold. I don't think they're supposed to. I almost want to just hang out right here because 
Only one of them is going... No, two. Here and here. Yeah, so I don't think that's a good idea. I'd like to pick up this gold, though. So, we'll go through here and then over there. The Crag Heart. Now, do I just, like, continue attacking? I... I'd like to say yes, but I, I also think it would be nice to just continue healing up. Confirm. And skip that attack. Nobody to attack. And then we heal up. And in this case, man, I kind of want to just keep healing the brute up. Because you're going to be doing just range attacks at this point. How many cards... Hmm. But you're going to heal too anyway. So we'll heal ourselves. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Heal up. This means we're getting our hide armor and boots of striding back, which is good. I'd like to keep grab and go just in case I'm able to grab some loot. I'm thinking balanced measure. Yep, balanced measure it is. Awesome. So I'm thinking let's let's jump into this room, kill whatever's in here, and then by the time they get around to us we'll be able to deal some damage to them. I'm just wondering how many enemies might be in here. It's not going to be much. Two, maybe. But let's go for a... Maybe Provoking Roar, Grab and Go. One, two, three, four. That means I can get anywhere in here and disarm them. And then we'll take these two cards and just see what we can do with it. And then you, my friend, if they pull that again, you're screwed. That, uh, that range attack. Because that could be one, two, potentially three incoming attacks. One of them is going to be using the leather armor. Let's go for it. <laughs> Let's long rest. Okay, they're just going to move two, so they're not going to be getting to you anyway. Alright, let's do this. Yeah, so there's only one in here, and it might be... Oh, and it's an elite too. It might be because... We only have, or we have one, two, three, four, five guards on the map, and we can only have six on the map ever at once, because because there's a there's a a uh, a clamp on that. I don't know for lack of a better word here. Uh, there's a maximum number of Enux guards that you can have on the map, and that's six. That's the way it is in the board game, and I know that there's some differences between the digital and the board game, and I'm wondering if this might be one of them, but I don't know. I don't know. You're only going to move two, so my thought here is just back up and let it come to us, but no, let's not. But let's not go all the way in either. Extra gold could be nice, but we'll just disarm you. Ooh, okay, but you do have retaliate. That's retaliate too. Yeah. So I dealt two damage, I took two damage. I don't know if that was worth it.
And then with you, I can't get any closer. But I'm I'm thinking that Yeah, you're not actually going to be doing anything else. Like we're, we're going to just take a, a long rest here after this. So I might have you just get ready. Yeah, let's do that. We'll skip that. You can see how useful these traps and obstacles are. Uh, they can't, they don't want to hurt themselves trying to attack us. So we can create these mazes for them to, to have to walk around. Let's get rid of special mixture, I think. I think that's all right. Okay. Okay. Round 11. Just four more enemies. And you, okay, that answers my question right there. So one was supposed to come in, but we are at our maximum. So this is another way of controlling the field of uh, if maybe if we kill one, or if we don't kill one, then one doesn't spawn. All right, so over here was one of those opportunities. Maybe I didn't, shouldn't have killed both of those with that skewer a few rounds ago because that wouldn't have allowed another um, Enox guard to be spawned. That's one way to, to think about that, so. All right. Well, I, I, I think long rest for, for Oxalis. Potentially eye for an eye to heal, and then I almost want to use this. Yeah, let's go for it. Eye for an eye, overwhelming assault. Let's try to deal a bunch of damage to you. And then uh, backstab for that move six. And I'm going to use throwing knives so that I can use to, uh, to fight them a little bit more. Well, if that's the case, let's use Sinister Opportunity for some move instead. They're not going to be able to catch up. So we can make a couple attacks and then back up a little bit. Um, or we could... No, let's make a couple attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So they're going to move one and then range attack. That would have been painful if we were over here resting at that point. So let's make a couple attacks here. You and... I guess you. Almost dead, that's good. And then I'm just gonna run away. Yeah, run run far away so we don't get any attacks there. Skip end. Alright, let's make this major attack here. Come on, man. Oh. That was perfect. I can't believe that. <laughs> do I want to? Do I want to heal or just pick this up? I I kind of want to heal, but I kind of want to pick up some gold too. I I, I still don't want to be happy about this. <laughs> That's the problem with Gloomhaven. Is I I really, it'd be nice to be happy about your turns, but it would also be devastating to uh, to pick up your to pick yourself up just to to let it fall away. All right, I'm going to heal, I think. Cragheart, all right. Let's heal you up, too. And I'm thinking... Yeah, Crater's already gone. Okay. I was just thinking, where's, where's uh, my jump card? It's already burned, so... We'll burn this one. I don't think he's going to be in a position to loot. 
So we'll, we'll go with that. All right, round 12. So you can see now another one spawned in because uh, there was one available. Okay, well, let's go with those two cards, I guess. But let's go late, as late as we can go, I guess. Uh, you do the same thing. And we'll use Venom Shiv as well. Let's, let's use those two. And then go late again here. And I'm thinking... One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's get Dirt Tornado. There we go. Massive Boulder should get us up close enough that we can use Dirt Tornado on that whole group. Or maybe let's do Sentient Growth instead. Let's make a smaller grouping so that we don't kill you. So that we can keep Pacifist. Okay. Yeah, they're just going to move one. That's good. They'll, they'll stay grouped up then. Um... Well, if that's the case, I, oh, I do have this. Okay, perfect. So I can I can run up to here. That's not what I want. Let's use this one. I was considering to burn, but a move six isn't really necessary. I've got boots of striding, so let's move up to here. And you're just gonna move one, so there's no attack coming there. And we'll make that kill now. I hope. Yep. Good. So once again, it, it's not going to go this way, and it can't go this way, so it doesn't move at all, right? All right. Well... That's the case. I think I'll just run up with a poison instead of single out. Oops. And I did it anyway. Yeah, so we'll walk up right here. And then just poison you with the venom shiv. And we've got two early, well, we've got three early cards. So we'll be able to attack and then run away, basically, next round. And for you... You, uh, you kind of got screwed back here. One, two, three. Yeah, it would have been really ideal for you to stand here for that. So, one, two... I could use this instead. Man, I just don't want to make an attack, right? So let's undo. I think... I think my best thing is... Let's just move up to maybe here. And... Ah, right. So this is something cool. Um... Oh, now is a good time to actually check line of sight. Okay, so it doesn't show up if you if you don't see it. Okay, cool. That's actually that's super helpful. That's awesome. All right. So this is range 3. So let's say 1 2 3. But if you press R, you can rotate it, and you can actually gain one more, um, one more hex with your range. So, the bigger this area, the more range you kind of get. You can target a a hex that doesn't have an enemy in it, as long as there's an at least one enemy in the AOE, no matter where. So. Over here, I can't target this hex, but what I can do is, whoops, rotate this so that it does, I'm targeting this hex now, and I will be able to attack that enemy, that monster. Um, now, unfortunately, I can't hit this one, but I can still hit here. I think I'm still going to go for that, yeah. 
Okay, a couple more dead. We just need to kill two more. So this is one that's going to be down and probably that one next round too. So we'll see if we can get this. We're just going to do a short rest and plow through this. Um... Yeah, sure. Uh, you're fine and you're fine. Okay. So, you, we definitely... Let's see here. We can... We can use this to attack two enemies because of that. I forgot this in the last round. Uh, but I wasn't able to, and I wasn't going to attack you because I, I have pacifists. I didn't want to, just by chance, kill you. And let's see here. So I could do Dirt Tornado on that group still. Yep. Do a little bit of movement, maybe. Let's go really late and do Heaving Swing with that. Uh, let's go really early to make this kill and then run away. Or we can just do this. Uh, an attack on her is just going to be mitigated. I like it. And because he's attacking with advantage because of strengthen, but she has the leather armor, it's canceled out. So it's just a normal attack against her. Then we'll go really late and do something like... I guess we can go with Spare Dagger. Yep. No, I don't like it. Let's let's go early. Well, we'll go a little bit later. You'll see why. Okay. Okay, so they're not moving, but they are shielding up. And they're attacking. So I'm hoping I can kill you. But if I don't, then that's fine. Yeah, okay, you're dead. <laughs> and if that's the case we'll just walk up confirm that pick up some more loot for her so I I think it's I think it's safe to say now that um this went, this went pretty smoothly. There were, I don't know, maybe one or two times where we had a lot of incoming damage and we somehow mitigated it, either by moving away or shields or just sheer luck. But um, it, it wasn't too bad, actually. We didn't really get to open up many doors, so it took a long time. Uh, we are on, what, what round are we on now? 13? Uh, so and we didn't get to open this door, which is, which is too bad, but, um, we can always come back and try and do this again and, and try and open up more doors. There's a chest somewhere in this, in this, uh, scenario. So we can always come back and try and find it and, and, uh, see what it gives us. So, uh, I'm just going to move. Yeah, let's move up to here, I guess. I guess it doesn't matter how far I move, but let's make this attack here. Oh, that's just one damage. Okay. That's all right. So, unfortunately, where you're standing, because they didn't walk toward us, this is this this one is a really good example of increasing the range. It's only range 2, which sounds kind of rough, but because this is two hexes away, I can target it by just moving this out here a little bit more, and now I'm able to actually hit this one, which is four hexes away, right? So it's not too bad, actually. Uh, but what we're going to do, actually, is just move up, and I'm just going to hit all of them. Why not? It's not 
going to do too much damage because they now have a shield, but it is going to muddle them for the next round. And if I pull plus, I got one plus one. So we only have to kill one more enemy. It's not too bad. So I think we'll be fine. We'll take a short rest here. That's fine, whatever. And really want to kill an enemy with uh, with Oxalis, but I'm holding him back for Pacifist. And it is, it's hurting me. Let's go heal and heal, I guess. And okay. Well, they're all muddled, so we don't have to worry too much about it. But we're going to go early with the Scoundrel, with Ate. Backstab for the movement and going early. And Sinister... Oh, yeah, not that one then. Let's go Throwing Knives. We'll go early. Um, we're going to use Sinister Opportunity to put you into this trap. But let's attack first. Let's attack both of them, and then we can put you in the trap after. And that should potentially, theoretically, kill this Enox guard. Heal, heal. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't see any other... Actually, let's use this to get some more experience out of it. And that will protect everybody. That's actually pretty, pretty good. And then we're going to use Skewer and Grab and Go. One... Uh, well, one, two, three. Take some damage. Four... Five, and then pick up a bunch of loot. That's kind of my idea here. They're going to go late and move one and attack for three. Okay. So let's make this attack here and hope for the best. Nope. So, all, I mean, all we have to do is survive the... Of course you hit him. Okay. Or her. Uh, for that plus two. So, yeah, we're still... Ooh, I could use that. No, I can't get adjacent. If I could get here to this hex, then I'd be able to push this guard into here to kill it. But that's not going to be the case. So we'll just move up to here. Yep. Skip the movement. And then I'm going to use or push, use this ability to push you into that trap, which will not kill you, unfortunately, but that's all right. Okay. Well, let's uh, put some shield on you both. That does give you some damage, but it helps out in the end. And then we will heal. I guess I probably want to heal you. You're going to be going into it, aren't you? You're going to be taking some trap damage. and Okay. But it's going to be worth it. They're just going to move one. So here or here. Two and two and four and two and two. So I guess it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't really matter, does it? So we'll just go here. I'll take the damage, I guess. But that's also another experience, which is pretty good. And then we will... Loot all that. That's another. That's eight gold for the brute. That's good. Okay, no damage. That's awesome. That's fine. We can mitigate some of that. That's awesome. Good. Okay, round 15. You only have three cards left, so I'm just going to short rest. Whatever it is... Oh. I kind of wanted that, so that you could pick up some more. Redraw. Eye for an eye, grab and go. Because now... I 
kind of want to get throwing knives, but... Let's go flanking strike, trickster's reversal, and you just take these two cards. Okay. Okay, all we need is just one mercenary to uh, to survive this round. Good. There it is. Check. And then just uh, make sure you don't take any damage for the first attack, that is. Which you'll probably get two. Now let's move over here. And then we'll loot this too. And this is this is something that uh, I really appreciate about Gloomhaven. It's not always run in and kill all of the enemies on the map. It's not always that. This one's a different kind of puzzle. It's you know you have to kill 15 enemies, and at first you know you you saw my re or you heard my reaction. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not always like that. Kill 15 enemies. And we just have to figure out the best way to survive while killing 15 enemies instead of opening every single door and killing all of the enemies. So this one is completely open-ended for... Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, undo. Let's use this. This one's open-ended to allow you to do whatever you want to do and uh, the way you want to do it. So I, I, uh, I appreciate that when there's, when it leaves things more open-ended. Oh, here we go, some more gold. I, I really like that about this game. So it looks like all of us are going to be surviving, which is great. There we go. No incoming damage. Even though I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I wasn't going to do any damage at all anyway, but... And that is victory. Running through the forest, fleeing the smell of burning flesh, you now find more than enough opportunity to contemplate your actions. As we can see here, we'll get down here in a moment, uh, the Brute killed the most enemies, Cragheart the, the least, and, um, you know, Scoundrel with five. So, that's two Sadist and Pacifist. Unfortunately, we're not seeing um, Die Hard for Ate, but that's all right. Eh, you, take, you take some and you lose some. It's, it's fine. Uh, damage dealt 50, 53, 52, 53. Wow very even i'm uh, i'm very surprised by that but yeah big numbers here this is good what about a lot of experience that's really good too but six one and five the brute really <laughs> really stepped up in the last couple of rounds to uh to pick up as much loot as he possibly could so picked up a perk point for both uh for Ares and Oxalis. Back to Gloomhaven. How your actions sit with you must be visible on your face as you meet once more with Jexera, this time in her manner. She hands you a sack of coins with a frown. They were thieves and murderers, she says blankly. They deserved what you gave them, and that is all I will say of the matter. I have one more task I would like you to perform. I require a diamond of considerable size for a customer, but I cannot find one anywhere in the city. There is a diamond mine, however, in the southern mountains long since lost to the wilderness. I've heard reports that it is now overrun with vermlings, no doubt with some other more intelligent force behind them. 
If you can fight your way in and grab the biggest diamonds you can find, I will give you a considerable reward. Now, leave me in peace. Jaxera's two massive Inox bodyguards step forward, directing you to leave the manor. Outside, contemplating your new task, you hear a small voice behind you. She's not looking for profit, you know. You turn around to see a female quattro step out of the alley beside Jaxera's house. She's clad in dark leather armor and holds a conspicuous contraption full of whirring gears and topped with a conical metal piece connected to a tube. Argis, city guard, she says, introducing herself. I know, I don't exactly look the part, but if anyone isn't what they appear to be, it's that Valrath you've been talking to. Sure, she's a merchant, but she's up to something far more sinister. She's been trying to overthrow the military in Gloomhaven for as long as I've been here, and we're all very curious about what her current machinations are. Look, you can go do her bidding like a good little puppy if you want, but if you'd rather actually help this town keep the peace and not get overrun by the wilds, I have a different idea. We'll get to the bottom of Jexera's plans and expose her for who she really is. So this is tough. This is uh, one of the first real branches and it's tough. Do we want to help Jexura? Or who the one, by the way, who's been paying us quite a bit. And um, the other option is go against her to help the city. Do we, do we want to be the good guys or potentially the bad guys? Now that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, helping Jaxura is a bad, the bad guys, but it sounds like the city guard is not too impressed with her. So we'll claim these rewards, 15 gold each, great. One more prosperity and six XP each as well. So we have the diamond mind. If we choose to help Jexura in her uh, quest of who knows what, or we head to the Gloomhaven warehouse where the uh, the Quattro city guard has a plan for us. You've unlocked a city quest. You can access it by clicking on Gloomhaven, the city map button, or clicking on the new quest in the log. After that, okay. Uh, oh, I see, it's just switching between the maps. Cool. I think you can just also click, yeah, you can just click on, on the city too. So it's over here. We have, well, I guess that's probably saying too much, but um, we have this option here. Or we have that option. So do we want to help Jexura or do we want to help the city guard or the city? Now, again, who's lying to us? We don't know. We're, we're mercenaries. We're here for the money. Are we here to help the city? The city seems to have a lot of money that they could help, uh, you know, pay for our way so we can continue eating and drinking our our uh, mercenary lives away. Or do we continue working for Jexura and make more money with her? She's been the one paying us. The city hasn't paid us a dime. So this is uh, this is an interesting thought here. But that's not for right now. What we get to do now is level up Ares and Ate. And we'll start off with a city encounter. Relaxing for the evening at the Sleeping Lion, a shifty looking man approaches you, hand outstretched. In it are a pair of pale dice with crude marks scratched on them. Greetings, friends. You look like you could stand to liven things up a bit. Care for a quick game of bone dice with me? I'm sure we could make it interesting. 
His other hand pats a coin purse at his side. Oof. I mean, personally, I'm not I'm not a gambling man. Um, <laughs> you probably can't you probably can't tell by the way that I play Gloomhaven, but uh, um, do we do we play? I mean, we're mercenaries, right? We just we just came across a whole bunch of money. What are we going to do with it? Let's play a game with the man. It may prove to be a good time. Nope, <laughs> it wasn't. You get into the game, but after a few rounds, your enthusiasm wanes as the man displays a streak of luck that can only be described as uncanny. You leave the table empty-handed. Well, that's a bummer. That is truly a bummer. So that's five gold each. Yeah, we would have had 30 plus for everybody, but all right, no problem. Uh, okay, next is the interesting that the uh, the alert here went away. Okay, but anyway, we've we've leveled up with Ares and Ate. Ares first. So level two. Fatal Advance. Kill one adjacent normal enemy outright. Doesn't matter how much health they have, but they have to be adjacent and they have to be normal. Which is great. <laughs> in in a pinch, we can just outright kill an enemy. And I think that's great. Plus it comes with a move 4, which helps out with his mobility issues. Uh, 40 initiative. Next. Juggernaut. And this is a move to attack to on the top ability, which is fantastic in a different way with mobility for Ares. Now he's able to move with a top action or a bottom action or both. He could move in, attack, and then move away. Or what, what I've liked to do in the past is move in, attack, and use something like Shield Bash to put shield on yourself so you can shield move and attack in one turn that is that is really good i i really like this card the bottom action here being on the next three sources of damage to you suffer no damage instead so if you're getting really low in health throw this card down and tank the next three incoming attacks without take uh, with taking nothing so I'm going to be taking Juggernaut. Uh, in the Guildmaster campaign, and this will be probably the last time I say it, I don't know how many times I said it before, or if you've, even if I said it before, but I had been choosing cards that I, I didn't use very frequently, and just to kind of test around, play around with it, which is what the uh, Guildmaster campaign really is, is like a testing ground while still playing uh, the Gloomhaven game. But in this series, I'm gonna, I, I won't stick to every card that I really like. I will still kind of play around, but I'm gonna choose a lot of the cards that I probably have in the past when I played it, uh, the board game that is. So I'm gonna take Juggernaut. I really love this card. Um, I think a lot of people probably like this card as well, but I, I do appreciate Fatal Advance. The mobility of move four and then being able to just outright kill a normal enemy is very powerful. But um, the move two, attack two, and being able to throw a shield up or eye for an eye for some healing or grab and go to move away after or this could be move four and then move two and attack two. So that would be a move six and then attack. So there's there's a lot going on with Juggernaut and I, I really appreciate it. And then when it gets to the end of the scenario, throw this out and now you don't have to worry about incoming damage. It's good, it's good. Okay. Two perk points available, right? Okay, we've gained three perk points to gain a perk and now 
um, we can have two. And I kind of... Where's um, this one? Ignore negative item effects and add one plus one card. This is going to do two things. One, I'll never have to worry about any amount of armor or, or boots or anything that's going to give him a minus one card or minus or negative effects or anything like that. And we also get a plus one. So essentially it removed two minus ones and gave me a plus one. So it's pretty good. But for the other one, we could go for consistency again to make sure that I'm hitting up here. But I think I want to take a rolling modifier and I'm looking at pacify because that's going to give me two rolling modifiers. One of them is a disarm and one of them is a muddle. And this way, regardless of what follows the, the rolling modifier, which is that, that little arrow that appears here, when you pull this first, you also draw another card. And regardless of what that card is, it's going to help because they're either muddled or they are disarmed. So I, I like these ones that I don't care what the, the number is that follows, even if this pulls after. Um, if I'm attacking for two, that's a disarm. Okay, times zero, so now we don't do anything, but you're disarmed. I think that's pretty nice, actually. So uh, Muddle has its own power as well. So I think, I think I'm gonna go for Pacify first. Although Sweep is actually pretty cool too. And Bulwark is nice too. Let's go for Pacify because I, I feel like it doesn't matter what card pulls up. And it gives us two more abilities that's going to, you know, either Disarm or Muddle. I think, I think that works. And I don't want to go for, like, Consistency, then Focus, then Power. You know, we don't need to do this with everybody. I think Ate might be the one that does something like that though. So next, Ate, leveling her up. Open Wound, an initiative of 11, which continues her ability to go very early. An attack four and add wound and gain one XP when your target is adjacent to any of your allies. So it's like, you know, it's like single out or flanking strike, except it's an attack four now and it's wounding instead of adding more damage, which this, this card is, I kind of appreciate this more because let's say you miss, you know that that wound, like you pull a times two, or a, a, sorry, a times zero, times two would be great with this card, but a times zero or a minus two, you know, you don't deal a whole lot of damage, but that wound is coming. And that's going to be consistent every round. They're taking an extra damage. Wound is, I, in my opinion, a very powerful uh, negative status for the enemies to be taking. Not, I don't, I don't want to be taking it, but I want them to be wounded all the time. So I really like this one. It's another move five uh, to to add to her stack of high mobility. So we'll, we'll probably take this one. Flintlock, however, is a loot on top, which is something that she doesn't have. No. Okay, loot one on the bottom, loot two on the bottom. And then if I was to take Swift Bow, that's more loot on the bottom. So this allows her to, like what I did with Ares in that last scenario, move really far let's say with whatever move five and then loot okay that's that's great i love when when loot is on the top it means that she's not going to be attacking but if if it's that last round and she's able to pick up like four five six piles of loot that's that's huge that's huge is that a reason to take this card i don't know with the bottom ability of attack five at range four, giving also giving two experience, is a very good reason to take this card. Now she's able to um, attack, maybe like flanking strike, and then attack somebody else at range. And that's a pretty major attack there. Five at range four. 
That's that's almost anybody on the map, uh, in the room at least. And an attack five against, let's say, an archer is a pretty decent way of killing an archer outright, or at least dealing a ton of damage to them. So Flintlock is a great card, and it's very late too. But to have that bottom attack there is is huge. I love this. And it's also really good in combination with Smoke Bomb. Because you go invisible, and then you immediately attack with range or with attack five. So that would be an attack of ten. I've killed many, many enemies with Smoke Bomb and Flintlock. Uh, and then now you're still invisible for the next round. So it's you just have to make sure you are connecting with that because you're burning this card and this card. So you better be connecting with that attack to make that worth it. And I've I've certainly missed with it before. So anyway, I have I have got a hard time with this one. I forgot Flintlock was coming up. I was I was so sure I was taking open wound. I think I'm going to go for a Flintlock with her. I was almost so sure that I would be taking Open Wound, and I really do like Open Wound. But my thought here is I'm going to even things out a bit more by taking an extra, or an additional extremely late card. And this is a very good card. Uh, like, a loot on the top, four Ate to vacuum up the loot. That does mean she's not attacking again, but it's still not a so not necessarily a bad thing. You can you can put that with um, Trixer's reversal, so put her in a position where she could be attacked in the next round, and then go really early with this and pick up some loot while you're standing there. So there's other ways of of using Flintlock, but anyway, we're gonna take Flintlock. I think that's going to be a pretty fun one. And I've already figured out which one I'm going to drop in order to bring that in. And that's Backstab. That does drop out a move 6. But I'm in order to, to bring in a late card, I'm thinking I need to even it out by dropping an early card. Um, I know what that I know that sounds backwards, but in this way I have a 90, a 93, and an 86. That's three late cards. And then a 4, a 10, and a 9. That's three early cards. And then, of course, I have Special Mixture and Venom Shiv. And um, I guess Smoke Bomb, too. But I have I had too many early cards, in a way. Backstab is going to be good to bring in if I'm going up against the boss. I know there's going to be a boss. Or if I know there's going to be like a nasty enemy in there. I'll just bring Backstab in and maybe drop like Venom Shiv or something like that. But Backstab is is a card that I like to, to use against bosses or major enemies. If I know they're not going to be there, then I don't really need it. Venom Shiv kind of does that anyway. Like I can still have a move 5 and this I can use over and over. Whereas Backstab, I, I'd probably be using the default attack until I had a really good opportunity for this. Venom Shiv, I can, you know, I can use it over and over again. So it increases her stamina a little bit more. All right. No more of that. For her perk, I kind of want to take consistency again. I, I, I like taking these ones for her quickly because I want her to be connecting all the time. This is going to make sure that that's going to be happening more frequently. Remove all of these negative cards to make uh, to make way for pulling more positive cards. Even if it's a zero, that's fine. But we can remove those zeros too, and then we can remove the minus too. Let's get rid of con uh, let's take consistency for her. So now she only has three negative cards, and then the rest are positive. So. That's this is good for for Ate for Scoundrel. So for the next time we'll be making the the choice. 
Do we want to continue helping Jexura, who's been paying us pretty well with her endeavor, with her quest, whatever that may be? Or do we want to maybe, my thought is, probably get paid less because it's a city, like the government is paying us kind of a thing. Do we want to get paid by the government, the city, to help them? And who is this Quattrell? Is is she actually a city guard or she just like steal some of this? We don't really know. Who is the bad guy in this situation? Is it Jaxura or is it that uh, that dark Quattrell that just came out of the shadows? So we'll figure that out in the next episode as we choose the next scenario. Well, with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you can let me know by leaving a like or a comment. And as always, thanks for stopping by and hope to see you next time.